he steps down with he stepped down from the job with five years to go mm -hmm. well let's uh, bring him in and find out why he did that what he's up to and what his concerns are we're joined by david walker as i mentioned former u.s comptroller general of the united states and the currently president and ceo of the newly established peter g peterson foundation david thank you for joining us it's good to be with you uh, interesting timing to have you with us today simply because of what's happened with Bear Stearns and if you will indulge me I'd like to ask you about a parallel that I see um, could Bear Stearns represent what could happen to the overall US economy with everyone just losing confidence in their balance sheet well I think you know there's a subprime crisis that people are concerned about right now which Bear Stearns was caught up with but we've got a much bigger subprime crisis dealing with the entire United States fiscal situation. You know, we have a budget deficit, we have a balance of payments deficit, we have a savings deficit, and the biggest deficit of all, we have a leadership deficit. We have too many people living for today and not enough taking steps to prepare for a better tomorrow. Take us through some of the numbers. I mean, I know a lot of people have heard your message in the States. You've been on a fiscal sanity tour for the past few years. But give us some numbers. Tell us, give us the sense of the enormity of the situation. Well, you know, some people say we don't really have a problem because we've had larger deficits and larger debt lo loads as a percentage of the economy in the past. That's true, but that's irrelevant. The problem is, is that not where we are, not where we've been, where we're headed. The United States is in a $53 trillion hole. That's $175,000 for every American. That's how much we have in liabilities and unfunded promises for our state pension and retiree health schemes. We've promised more than we can deliver and we're gonna to have to restructure our promises the sooner the better. There's a lot of lenders right now, of course, uh, outside the country who've been lending the United States money. They have been watching the value of their debt erode as the U.S. dollar falls. How much of this is that complicated by the fact of what's actually happening in the short term right now? You've got the Fed lowering interest rates, of course, depressing uh, the U.S. dollar. How long until we see some of these foreign lenders revolt? Well, that's the real wild card. I mean, we've had to rely increasingly on foreign lenders because the United States has a savings deficit. Uh, and therefore, we've had to borrow from countries that, that do have savings in order to finance our excess consumption. So far, they've been willing to lend us that money at very attractive interest rates. But if they change their mind, either for economic reasons, diversification reasons, political reasons, or whatever, then that will have a very adverse effect on interest rates, the economy, and various other aspects that we need to be concerned with. How adverse an effect? I mean, I guess I'm trying to put some numbers to this just so people can really understand. Well, last year, 9% of the federal budget was for interest on the debt held by the public, of which about half of it was held by foreign players. That was $238 billion. Uh, and, and as I said, for fairly low interest rates. So if interest rates start going up, compounded with increasing deficits, which will escalate when baby boomers, those born between 46 and 64, retire in big numbers, that's a toxic mix. Uh, David, it's Andrew Bell. I mean, uh, uh, according to The Economist magazine, American workers are still the world's most productive. Uh, America, obviously, such huge reservoirs of ingenuity, technical advances. Won't America just pull through this? I mean, the U.S. economy is such a powerhouse over the, more than a century now. Look, I'm an optimist. My family has been in this country since the 1600s, uh, and I want to make sure that we're the first republic to stand the test of time. But we need to learn from history. The Roman Republic fell for three reasons. One, decline in moral values and political civility at home. Two, overconfident and overextended militarily around the world. And three, fiscal irresponsibility by the central government. If that sounds familiar, America needs to wake up sooner rather than later. What would it take to balance the budget? <laughs> yeah, it would take first tough budget controls they all expired in 2002 we need to bring back tougher ones than we had before controls on spending uh you know controls on making unfunded promises uh you know pay-as-you-go rules on spending and tax proposals we need to reform social security we need to reform our health care system and we need to reform our tax system in a way that frankly will be more efficient more equitable but will raise more revenues i i, I want to refer to some comments you made earlier uh, i think you had said that the balancing of the budget uh, could be done by 2040, but it would count, uh, you would need to um, cut total federal spending by 60% uh, and raise federal taxes to twice the current level. That doesn't sound very probable to me. 
Well, I think what we need to learn from what Albert Einstein said, who was a fairly smart person. The most powerful force on Earth is not nuclear energy, it's the power of compounding. The sooner that we make the changes, the, 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 the less they have to be, because the more time that compounding will work for us. Uh, the scenario of just raising taxes or just cutting spending will not work. Uh, we're going to have to get more out of reforming our public pension and retiree health programs. We're going to have to constrain spending, but we're ultimately going to need some more revenues, too. David, it's a huge topic, but I'd love to hear your views on the health, health system in America. What do you think needs to be done? Well, a few statistics. We spend over double per capita of what any country in the world does, over 50% more of our economy uh, than any other country on Earth, and yet we have below average health care outcomes and the highest percentage of uninsured population of any industrialized nation on Earth. I think we have to do four things. Uh, we have to separate between what people want uh, and what we can afford and sustain. We need to have universal coverage for basic and essential health care, a budget on what the federal government will spend on health care, universal evidence-based practice standards for the practice of medicine and prescription drugs, and increased personal responsibility and accountability for health care. We're going to have to figure out an American way, which is formed, informed by Canada, UK, Germany, other countries around the world. We can do it, but the longer we wait, the more we risk health care bankrupting America. David, would you buy U.S. dollar bonds today yourself for your kids? Oh, sure, I would in the short term. I mean, in the short term, they're a safe investment. Uh, but I think what we need to understand is it's fundamentally imprudent uh, to rely upon foreign players who may or may not share the same economic and political interest as our country uh, to finance more and more of our nation's mortgage. Uh, it means, by definition, they have more influence on us and we have less influence on them. You know, we have certain large, known, and growing problems, and we got to start dealing with them. We've only got a few seconds left, and I do apologize. You're starting a new position right now where you are the president and CEO of the Peter J. Peterson Foundation. Uh, you've got a billion dollars, I understand, and a, a mandate. What do you plan on doing? What do you want to tackle first? We're going to deal with uh, the uh, budget deficit, the savings deficit, the balance of payments deficit, health care, and uh, social security. Those are our top priorities. They're all interrelated. They're all time sensitive. They need more attention. The sooner the better. David, thanks so much. Thank you. We Take care. We'll have you back and see how it all goes. All right. Great. Be happy to. David Walker, former U.S. Comptroller General and President and CEO of the Peter J. Or Peter G. Peterson Foundation, and he joined us from, uh, from New York. Uh, interesting in that you, oh. he's, he'll buy things in the short term. But, Pretty concise. Uh, Pity he doesn't go into politics. Yeah. I would, shake I, things up. Well, I, as he's mentioned, uh, basically fiscal prudence is not something that's very electable.